Hello, welcome to MediCorea. In today's video, we shall be talking about a diagnosis that has been trending recently in Uganda. It's been spreading like a wildfire and it's all over the place. Bacterial infection. Is it actually a valid diagnosis? For a bigger part, I would say it's a scam. And for a small part, I would say possibly it's a little bit valid. And I'll be talking about that towards the end of the video. Why do I think it's, it's a scam for the bigger part? This challenge of bacterial infection, I would say, has about five issues. One is the money problem. Two is the problem of lack of qualification by some healthcare workers. And three is negligence or laxity by some qualified healthcare workers. Four, the problem of the people or the patients. And lastly, the problem of regulation or the government. Let's begin with the money problem. The money problem is what I actually believe to be the very origin of the whole bacterial infection thing. In Uganda, about 40% of the citizens obtain healthcare from private healthcare facilities as the first option to healthcare. Some of these facilities have put money at the forefront of everything, putting aside the very purpose for which they should be operating, and that is uh, making patients' lives better. When you walk into such a clinic, you are not allowed to walk out without a diagnosis. That is to say, if you should only get reassurance, or if you have a minor complaint, or a complaint that they don't have the understanding at all, they find a way of giving you a diagnosis that scares you enough to think that you need serious treatment for your condition, and then you, know, you pay a hefty amount of money for it. And bacterial infection seems to fit snugly into that position. The second challenge, which may not be very far from the first one, is the challenge of lack of qualification among some people who are actually working in the healthcare field. And this is still a problem that seems to be happening a lot in some healthcare facilities. So in some facilities you find people who do not have any medical training at all working there. And this could be maybe children of the appropriate of the business and maybe they are, they are you know, in their holidays and then they go work in such places. Oh, you know, these are people who are trained on job and because they are cheaper labor, uh, proprietors prefer to employ those and then they pose around with clinical courts and call themselves doctors, specialists and all sorts of things. And because they do not have the understanding to make proper diagnosis, every other thing they see is either malaria or bacterial infection or as a bonus they might maybe diagnose a UTI. So every time you see such a person, they give you one of those three diagnoses out of a multitude of diseases that we have in the medical field. The third challenge, like I mentioned, is uh, the challenge of qualified healthcare workers who are a bit lax. They are not, uh, you know, serious with learning because in the medical field, uh, you know, there is always new knowledge emerging. It's very dynamic. There is new research being done. But even then, the issue of bacterial infection, I think, goes back to the basics of training. I think these people didn't read enough. So you find someone uh, acting similar to someone who hasn't been trained, okay? And then they, they are making, you know, a short list of diagnoses, just like someone who hasn't gotten any medical training at all. Because when you look at the whole issue of bacterial infection, someone who is trained and has read their books enough should be able to understand that there is a multitude, a very huge multitude of bacterial infections. I'll give you some few examples. Meningitis, an infection of the membranes coating your brain, can be a bacterial infection. A brain abscess can be a bacterial infection. An infection of your ears, known as otitis, can be a bacterial infection. Okay, an infection of your throat, pharyngitis, bacterial infection. Pneumonia, bacterial infection. UTI, bacterial infection. Gonorrhea, bacterial infection. Syphilis, bacterial infection. Tuberculosis, bacterial infection. Typhoid fever, bacterial infection. All of those and many others that I've not mentioned are all bacterial infections. So when someone says bacterial infection, which of those are they actually referring to? So, well, to some small degree they might be right by guessing that it's a bacterial infection and then giving a broad spectrum you know treatment they might tackle one of those but anyway they could still miss out on, on another but i think we could do better we could try to specify where is the focus of this infection is it in the lungs is it in the urinary tract is it in, an, in the abdomen is it in the eye is it somewhere else okay i think a healthcare worker should be able to do just that such that instead of just saying bacterial infection, at least tell this patient or make this diagnosis that specifies. Because when you specify, you are able to narrow down to a bunch of bacteria, maybe five, three possible 
you know, bacteria that could be causing this problem. And therefore, even the choice of antibiotics that you're going to pick is more well-informed and more guided. And then the fourth problem is the problem of the people or the patients. Over time, as the, the bacterial infection challenge has been spreading, the patients are also getting used to it. To the extent that when you actually speak against bacterial infection, you sound like the stupid one. I've had patients actually pushing me to diagnose them with bacterial infection or to give them treatment for bacterial infection. Sometimes they go ahead and demand that I do a test for bacterial infection and I get stuck. What kind of test? Of course, there's general screening tests like the, maybe the CBC and so on, but they are not specific enough. They should only give me a hint that maybe the condition this patient has is maybe of bacterial origin. But I should go you know, ahead and listen to this, this patient carefully to understand the symptoms and examine this patient carefully and maybe request a few specific tests to identify the kind of infection that we are dealing with. But then because patients are used, they are now becoming the driving force of this problem and keep spreading even more and more, which is not a nice situation. And then lastly, one might wonder, how are all these things happening in this country? Do we not have anybody regulating medical practice? Well, we actually do. But then I think they are weak regulatory bodies, they, they have weak systems, they suffer from you know, corruption which has eaten up the country a lot. They also suffer from an inadequacy of resources. So it becomes a bit challenging to regulate healthcare in Uganda. So uh, you have all these things going on, but then there is little being done. Of course, I know probably our regulatory bodies are trying everything they can to try to address the issue. I see Minister of Health having you know, bi-weekly webinars to try to educate healthcare workers about different diagnoses. But then I think the solution to this should begin with awareness. Let us uh, know that bacterial infection for a bigger part is a scam. And the next time someone tells you you have bacterial infection and they're going to pump you with antibiotics, please run for your life. Know that that's a wrong healthcare worker for you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching till the end. If you've enjoyed, do smash that like button. If you'd like to see more videos, do subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. And if you have any further concerns, questions, comments, corrections, feel free to drop them in the comment box below or to email us at uh, medicory at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to see more about this video, do check out our description box uh, for more information and for other links. Uh, thank you so much and see you next time.